I'm bored. Play with me. <laughs> We're bad guys. It's what we do. Hi, I'm Mishti Max, and I'm here to share this get ready with me makeup tutorial for me, Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. I'm sure this would make for a great Halloween costume. It's quick and easy to do, doesn't require a lot of precision for the eye makeup, so you can just relax and smear bright colors all over your face and run around the streets wreaking mischievous havoc acquiring candy. It was extremely fun to wear this marvelous mad makeup, and it certainly brought out the crazy in me. <laughs> it makes for a vicious, batshit crazy good old time. Come on, got something better to do? Now that they've let me out to do their bidding, I get to play with my toys again. What will I need for a night of murder, mayhem, or a date night with my pudding? Ooh, I like this one. And excuse my voice, I've been stuck in this cage for so long and I haven't had anyone to talk to. <laughs> For the hair, I have these different colored thin hair bands from the supermarket and I got out a few pink and blue ones. Then I roughly split my hair down the middle and separated out some front fringe bang type stuff to frame the face and went about creating my two high pigtails using the pink ties on my right side and the blue on my left. I didn't color the ends of my hair because they threw out my hair dye, but hair chalk or colored hairspray could work for you. I felt like I had too much fringe going on, but I just tucked that behind my ears. Who gives a fuck? And then I have something like this. I applied some lip ointment to moisten my lips for the liquid to matte lipstick later. I took out all my regular dangly earrings and started to replace them with these 8mm loops in most of my holes. And then I grabbed some safety pins to hang off the loops to give the general feel of my jewelry in the movie. I wouldn't suggest sticking these directly through your ears unless you want to stab yourself horribly. I just bought this Regal Rose Red Abalone Velvet Choker and I wanted to wear it, so I used that as my neck piece in place of my pudding choker. And I think any choker type necklace would work well enough. Onto the makeup and I primed my eyes with Too Faced Shadow Insurance going all around the eyeballs and down the cheeks as well. Basically everywhere I think I'm going to be putting eyeshadow. I took the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk and applied that generously to my brow bone and inner corner before blending it down towards the crease, smoothing it out with my finger. I whipped out Sugar Pill Taco and applied the matte white all over the white cream base with the Sugar Pill Eyeshadow Brush, packing it down to the crease and onto the inner area thoroughly. I have the Makeup Forever Flash Palette and I'm taking out the red cream color to smear over my right mobile eyelid space using my finger, applying a generous amount up to the crease line. I faded it out upwards with my finger and a fluffy brush. Then for my left side, I'm rubbing that deep blue cream in much the same manner over that eyelid and using a clean finger to blend it into the crease along with the help of a blending brush. I swooped a transition shade through the whole socket using an Inglot number 111R eyeshadow and the Sigma E25 blending brush. And I blended that down with some more matte white. I dipped the Sigma E70 medium angled shading brush into this light blue to do the same on the left eye. And I pulled some of that color into the inner crook of my eye as well, like I like to do. And I matched that with the peach on the other side. I have a few options for red eyeshadow, like Sugar Pill Love Plus, like I love my pudding. But I wanted to use this limited edition Sugar Pill eyeshadow, and I'm whacking that onto my lid with a MAC 232 brush up to the crease and softening the edges with a fluffy blending brush before dipping into the pinkish red shade to pull the color higher and blur it out with the peach eyeshadow. I'm layering all those shades to create a red smoky eye. I'm not really being too careful about it. I'm, I'm just, just going, going nuts. I have Sugar Pill Velocity and the MAC 242 to press along the lash line on the blue side and I'm mixing that with Sugar Pill Optipotty to create more of the color I want and then blending out the edges using that angled shade and brush and more after party. I'm taking that from the outer corner to the inner corner for maximum smokage. I'm adding some taco to fade out the edges with that sugar pill brush. I touched up the lid too, 
I'm pulling out Inglot Matte Gel Eyeliner in number 77 to coat my tight lines using a pointed cotton bud. I added a few dots of product along the lash line that smudged that out with the clean side of the cotton bud, running that all the way along for a diffused, grungy eyeliner effect. I dragged out the corner into a wing in a rough and mad manner, giving a wild, crazy feel. <laughs> I did the same on the other side and used some eyeshadow to blend the top of the eyeliner and refresh the lid. Now to get really dark and dirty, I have Makeup Geek Corrupt Eyeshadow and the Sigma E21 smudge brush so I can darken up the lash line, drag out the eyeliner wing and help further diffuse the smudgy eyeliner with more red and blue eyeshadow respectively. I went back to the flash palette to smear some blue cream along my left lower lid, running it along there with a cotton bud and buffing it out with a fresh one. I'm not bothering to clean up any fallout just letting that help with the worn-in grungy feel. The red side got the same treatment and I used my finger to fade the cream out. I jumped back to the black gel eyeliner and coated my waterline, giving it a good smudge into the roots of the lashes and dragging it down into the lower lid. I used the tip of the eyeshadow brush to press some of the Sugar Pill Limited Edition shade along the lower lid and did the same with Velocity on the left side. I blended out the other side with the blending brushes and went in with the smudge brush and black eyeshadow to define the eye and make sure the eyeliner shape flows well from the lower lid. I grabbed some more limited edition and peach shadow along with some after party to take these colors lower down under the eyes with the fluffy blending brushes. I also pressed more pigment closer to the eyes so it's concentrated there and fades downwards nicely. I brushed up the brow bone by packing on more taco eyeshadow. Love is Here's the Moonchild Glow Kit from ABH and I chose the shade Blue Ice before applying the Ever Icky NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Cottage Cheese for a sticky shimmery base and then proceeded to go back into Blue Ice for a highlight on the tear duct and for the red side I grabbed Pink Heart from the palette to add some shine there and blended the shimmer onto the start of the lid and outwards too. I curled my eyelashes with the usual tortured device to prepare them for a few coats of L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I ended up with blobs of mascara on my eyeshadow, but you shouldn't get rid of it until it's dry. So I continued on to priming my face with Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I used the Revlon Colorstay Eyebrow Liner in Blonde to color in the sparse areas of my brows. And after I combed them through with my eyebrow spoolie, I used a clean disposable spoolie to lightly scrape off the errant mascara blobs and I touched up any eyeshadow that got removed. Back to the brows and I used the light shade from the Urban Decay Brow Box in Bathwater Blonde to run through my eyebrows and to set the hairs in place and lighten up the color I brushed through some NYX Tinted Brow Mascara. For that extremely pale, freshly chemically treated base, I combined my usual bourgeois foundation in 51 light vanilla with a touch of the white cream from the flash palette and the Body Shop Lightning Shade Adjusting Drops. Then I dabbed that all over my face, even adding some extra white in there, and after a spritz of MAC Fix Plus, I pounced that into my face with a damp beauty blender. I blended the base a little bit past my jaw and down my neck, and now it's time to set all that well. I have the very useful taco eyeshadow from Sugar Pill again and I'm using the Sigma F40 Large Angled Contour Brush to press that white powder into the base, making sure not to swipe and remove any product. I ran the tinted brow mascara over my eyebrows again to remove the powder that got stuck in there and I went back to the white powder but used the large fluffy brush to set the makeup close to my eyes. Then I proceeded to use more matte white and inglet peach shadows to match the red side into the base. I'm also taking the light blue transition shade for the other side until I get a grungy, messy overflow of smokage down there, keeping the color concentrated more close to the lash line. For a bit of fun, I grabbed the pink heart and blue ice highlighters, respectively, to apply a tiny amount to each cheekbone. However, since I wanted a fairly matte white base, I dampened that down with my makeup sponge and some white powder. And now we have the exciting stuff. I dipped my cleansed fingers into the red eyeshadow and dragged them down my cheek. I also used the fluffy blending brushes to blur that out. I added more streaks with my finger, creating a shape starting from the corner of my eye and tapering down and out. 
I repeated the same steps on my blue side using after party eyeshadow and those fluffy brushes, adding some dark blue at the center of the streams and closer to the eyes so the pigmentation fades out from the source. I added some Makeup Geek Corrupt with a smudge brush through the center of the lines coming off the lower lash line. Buffing that out with some more blue eyeshadow and the blending brushes. I dabbed more pinky red closer to the lower lids and I used some darker red Sugar Pill Love Plus to deepen up the smears along with matte black and blending it all down from the eyeliner with the fluffy blending brushes. I'm buffing that with the Sugar Pill eyeshadow brush until I have a little something like this. Now I have to go about making those streaks look nice and worn in after a fight so I dusted some white eyeshadow over the top. I tweaked the blue side and adjusted the red side too, adding more shadow higher up and some lighter streaks with peach, making both sides asymmetric and crazy, overlapping the pigments with face powder to melt that into my face. I dunked the flat brush into the red shadow to drag a higher spur from the top of the crease and I'm using my fingers to pull down the color too. For the face tattoos, I'm starting by using an eyeliner brush and a light brown eyeshadow to sketch out where I want the heart to go. I'm using this eyeshadow so I can wipe away the marks if it's too high and I'm readjusting the position. Then I'm going in with the Physicians Formula eyeliner pen to draw the heart, starting with the outline and then filling in with the brush tip pen. It's a lot easier to do than it looks with a decent eyeliner pen. For the rotten writing, I scribbled a text on a piece of paper and looked at the reflection in the mirror. I moved the mirror over to this side so you guys can have a look. And I went straight in with the eyeliner since I'm doing it the easier way and I don't have to transpose the letters in my mind. It's kind of hard with all the voices talking to me in there. <laughs> Every so often, I'm wiping off the end of the eyeliner pen on the back of my hand to get rid of that powder that transfers onto the brush tip as I go along and that way the ink continues to be dark enough. It's still rather difficult to write on the side of your face, especially that far over close to your ear, which is almost impossible to see past your damn nose, so see if you can get your pudding to do it. I fleshed out the design and tried to match the font style with the extra details and thickened up the letters. I tried to carry the tattoo with a similar angle as the one in the movie. It ended up a little wonky, but it's still kind of decent. I pressed on some white eyeshadow over the top of the tattoos so it looks like they're under the face makeup and more realistic. I even applied some peach shadow over the heart to merge it in. I removed the powder off my lips and I primed my lips with MAC Prep and Prime Lip Base. And while that sets, I decided to jazz up my beauty spot with my eyebrow pencil and I'm enjoying some Rage Against the Machine for some anarchy inspiration. <laughs> I pulled out my stubby little MAC pencil in Cherry to outline my lips in my usual pointed Cupid's bow shape and to fill in the base for maximum staying power. I have the Lime Crime Velveteen in Red Velvet to thoroughly coat my lips directly from the applicator for a deep red shade that will withstand all the shooting, beating and popcorn eating. I removed the excess from the center of the lips before drying my lipstick with the traditional demented smile and fan trick just like Mr. J does. I seem to have used too much cream base and I ended up with some creasing on my lids, but it only adds to the mad and rough look of the makeup. This really was a thoroughly enjoyable look to wear and I loved the way everyone looked at me with a fair amount of fear and apprehension, which happens a lot when I go out all dressed up as I do. With only a couple of costume additions, you can make this look even more easily recognizable. I just wore this Lucky 13 Must Bang Sally t-shirt and a varsity jacket. And for a prop, all you need is a baseball bat. <laughs> I have my old Louisville Slugger with which to raucously pummel my enemies with. I wasn't gonna wear the Harley booty shorts since it's winter here and I'm not about to have my cheeks hanging out that far. But luckily Miss Sally on my t-shirt has her booty hanging out so I don't have to. Check out the Halloween playlist that I'm getting all lined up in the card and description box. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this movie character makeup tutorial and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also check out my band and podcast on iTunes. And if you want to send me a letter or something, I have my PO box in the description box. Ha ha ha!